once again, this is a shout out to my Patreon rewards for May 2016. I really, really appreciate all their contributions and for sticking with me for this long. Sarah Olson, Brandon Harms, Charon, and Shield Generator. You guys have stuck with me for this long for the past few months and I, I cannot begin to thank you enough. I thank you so much and you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I hope you and everybody else enjoys this video. Keep an eye out for the rainbows. They will make you smile. Hello, everypony, and welcome to this very special video of behind the scenes for my series, Flight of Blight, those three episodes. Um, we're just going to kickstart it off right now, and as you can see, we are in a Word document that is hosted on Google Docs. Now, this here is the script. All of this, all 12 pages of this is the script. And this script would turn out to be almost as long as a My Little Pony episode, about 21 minutes. And the average My Little Pony episode lasted at least 22 minutes if you take out the commercials. <laughs> so, yeah. This script took about three months of making because at one point I started it out, um... Well, I guess I should just start from the beginning. Well, when I first came up with the idea, I was really inspired by um, my favorite 80s cartoon series, uh, Rainbow Bright, Attack of the Monstro Merc. And basically, it was color versus uh, blackness or darkness, gray, um, where uh, basically Rainbow Bright and her friends had to stop Murky and his creation, the Monstro Merc, from destroying the world and the universe itself because this creature zapped the color out of everything. And I guess that wouldn't sound like a big deal, but do you really want to live in a world without color? I mean, that's kind of depressing, isn't it? Anyway, I really loved the story of basically a color versus monochrome, a light versus dark battle sort of thing. And it got me thinking, well, I love the rainbow so much. That's who I am. It's what gives me hope and it's what makes me smile. It, it what tells me that everything is going to be okay. And it got me thinking, but that's, a ha that's only part of me. Do I have a darker side that I could basically contribute? Well, here's the next part that comes in that also inspired me for the Flight of Blight series. And that was at a moment with Dr. Wolf with Firebrand, a.k.a. Josh Scorcher. Where basically Firebrand was talking to Dr. Wolf about his anger management issues. And that he started talking about the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues. Now, Firebrand mentioned that his, his sin would be rage, but his virtue would be justice. And that got me thinking, and I kind of had to do a little soul searching and look inside myself and, and wonder if I had any of those. And I didn't know particularly my sin is pride. I have quite a bit of pride, and I know that if it's stung ever so slightly, it's really hard for me to come back from, and it can really affect my work as well as my friendships and relationships if I don't tone it down. But what was my virtue? Ironically, I found out after a bit of soul searching and doing research with friends and <laughs> I admit even some quizzing on the internet, I finally came to a conclusion that my virtue is ironically the exact opposite of pride. It's humility. When it, when it comes to my work ethic and who I am as a person, I do know I can get better, I can better myself, I can be better around other people, I can work better around other people, and I need to be humble, especially around those who have succeeded much farther up than me. And even more so, people that are have not succeeded as much as maybe where I am, but they contribute so much, and they help to inspire me as well. And it... I, I'm always worried about stepping on toes and hurting people's feelings, and I'm just trying to keep my head down a lot, too. So, yeah. Now that I got that situated, I started coming up with this script, and that was for uh, Blight. Now, Thunder uh, Bliss, <laughs> Thunder Blight, as her name became, started out as, like, 
Thunder Bliss at one point, and I came up with a rough, uh, rough idea of her, and got inspired by from the hairstyle with Twilight from Castle Sweet Castle, and I thought, well, that's a hairstyle I will never do, but my alter ego would, because my alter ego is the exact opposite of who I am. She is pride, she is rage, she's anger, she's overconfident, she knows how to use magic, etc., etc. I knew that from the start, that's what Blight was going to be. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, well, Thunder Blight, why Blight? I mean, Blight means, like, uh, like disease and plague. And I go, yeah, well, it rhymes with bliss a little bit there. And, of course, l what comes after lightning? Thunder. So, yeah, I figured. I mean, not to mention, a lot of people notice that the opposites of those two are also pretty obvious. Like, there's light for lightning, and then there's thunder, which is sound, which is the fastest of the two. It's interesting. It's an interesting uh, metaphor, I guess you could say. So, as things continued, I began writing the script. And for the most of this you could see, this is how it first started out. But then as the story continued, believe it or not, this was not how it was going to continue. So after Blight emerged and tied up Lightning Bliss and basically disregarded her, I originally had Thunder Blight leave her channel and go off to conquer other channels and basically turn every pony she met into their polar opposite selves kind of like with discord uh yeah um return of harmony yeah i admit even that took a bit of a, a life of its own into my script where basically blight went around and basically turned took away everybody's colors but in doing so she took away their their strongest talent so, for a good example, let's say Eliora. Eliora's strongest talent, I believe, by far was her passion. So when Thunderblight invaded her channel and basically beat her to a pulp, she stole her colors and her passion along with it, leaving Eliora with basically no motivation, no fire, no, no rage, nothing. She was just there, the poor thing. Or how about um, two critic Y2K? If Thunderblight took his uh, redness away, it just left him black. Um, his talent was charisma, and now he ha he doesn't even have that anymore. So again, he he's lost energy and stuff. Anyway, that's originally how the script was going to be, but I found myself I found that I was stretching myself really super thin with all the the backgrounds I would have to create. And uh, the new vectors I would have to make for everybody else and turning them gray and stuff. It, I was really stretching myself thing as it is because I already had a list of people I wanted to be a part of that were willing to do this with me. And that was uh, Emerald Comet, Robin0928, 2 Critic Y2K, Keep Brave, Golden Fox, Dr. Wolf, and Eliora. So. Once I realized I was stretching myself too thin, and not to mention I didn't like the idea of actually physically hurting all of my friends, uh, I mean, could you imagine Thunderblight attacking Dr. Wolva? It's horrible. Um, I even wrote a paragraph for that, and I, I never showed it to Doc, but I think it went something along the lines of Thunderblight was waiting for him in his office, and Doc was surprised to find light, well, so-called lightning bliss there, and could tell there was something going on. And Thunderbite basically chewed him out as a, a false um, supporter that he thinks he's helping when he's really not. He, yeah, it was just really awful stuff. And and a part of me felt like I can't believe this is coming out of me. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be exercising my rage and pride, but I don't like what I'm hearing. Is that really how I feel? So I pulled myself back and thought for a minute, and I go, no, th this is just exaggerating the story, and I don't really like it, so let's just pull back and redo this part. So that's basically what happened. Everybody was getting together at the cafe for a drink that night because, well, it's, a dr it's tradition for us and our friends to go um, to the... Uh, during conventions, it's kind of become a tradition where all of us reviewers and content makers come together and have a special dinner together. And I like to think that, well, if we were all neighbors, we'd all probably go out for a drink at the cafe. So that was the plan when, of course, everybody realizes that Lighty Place isn't showing up and they go to see what's going on. 
and the rest you basically know. And then of course the, you got the epic battle scene, but we'll get to that in a moment. So yeah, this is the script. It took quite a few months to make. Uh, why did I choose all those people in particular? Well, a lot of them were part of the Magic Lesson series that I did with them. Uh, Keyframe was not, nor was Toon Critic or Dr. Wolf for that matter, or Golden Fox. However, I worked with them on the TF2 project. I've gotten to know them all so very well over the past year. And every single one of them, despite not being the Magic Lesson uh, series, they have helped me to grow, and I just wanted them to be a part of it. Eliora, too. She helped make me, you know, a more stronger, confident alicorn, for that matter. Uh, Dr. Wolf is probably the reason why I'm even in the community to begin with. I mean, he kind of opened the door for me. I walked in, and then he helped give me my big break and even encouraged me to expand my horizons. Uh, Keyframe helped me with writing. She's an amazing writer and voice actress, and she just got me this far. And, and of course, Two Critic is all about charisma. I mean, without him, I don't know if my humor would have popped up as much as it has. So there's the script. Uh, moving on to the uh, the actual production of everything. As you can see, um, this is my MLP folder, and. I would call it organized chaos. I just know everything where everything is by folder name alone. So for instance, the project folder, this is where I do all my projects. In this case, the flight of light special is right in here. So you can see I even have a, a door that I, that I helped to custom make. And then here are all the finals of the flight of light. And as you can see, this is my rendering program called Adobe After Effects. Let's see, and I'm trying to figure out the the actual file where I did everything, and I don't think I can, so I'll just launch part one. This is basically where I assembled everything after I created the vectors, which I'll get to in a second. If this will load. <laughs> it's t it takes a while to load. It's a really big program. Just another reason why I want to get a new computer, because it would probably load this faster. I rely so much on this program, though. It's what gives me the ability to make the effects as good as they are. Normally, I make my own 2D effects, but for, their, but for those other special, like, camera movements or, uh, like, lightning effects, I rely heavily on this program. Everything is assembled within here, and yeah, it's just telling me that uh, all of my files are missing because I've either moved them or something. Yeah, my my corrupted bl bliss uh, thunder blight has been moved to a different folder since then, so don't worry about that. Anyway, so you have the very beginning of it. Here's where everything is all set up. As you can see, I'm trying to get everything organized here. So I had like folders for my backgrounds. Uh, these little things right here are my comp folders. Then I have all the poses from everyone, from Blight to Bliss, Dr. Wolf, Elior, Emma Common, Golden Fox, Keyframe, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. <laughs> I'm not about to go into detail about how I assembled everything together because it's just too complex. And it took me four years of, well, not more, more like eight years of school to figure it out myself but it is a complicated program I would highly recommend going to school if you want to know how it works but as you can see all these right in here these are different forms of layers different vectors for each one and basically I just assemble them all together in the ways I want while adding effects so I could do a quick uh, quick speed render Yeah, and of course it takes a little while because a lot of the stuff that Lightning Bliss was looking at at the very beginning were just past videos and that takes a lot of rendering power. <laughs> That's weird. But yeah, you get the idea. So this is how I assembled everything together. This was just like, this was like final production. But if I take you back to pre-production, that was to assemble 
all of the vectors. So, going into my other content, these are all the poses for Lightning Bliss. Normal Lightning Bliss, anyway. As you see, I almost have 200 of them alone, and that's just from a 3D perspective. And every video, I feel like I'm coming out with new poses. It's like I, I never just use the old ones, I always use new ones, too. And as you can see, I can ha I have more, like, even, look, I even got this from the Tomb Blistermon review I did with Tomb Critic. Um, but then you had uh, the other vectors that I created for the show, such as uh, Corrupted Bliss, where she lost her pupil and eyes. Get a close-up right there. It's so weird without her pupil, but she kind of looks cool in a way. But yeah, you get the idea. How do I make all of these? How did I make all of these for, say, Dr. Wolf, Eliara, all, everybody else? Well, I have a puppet that I made myself. Like, Emerald Comet... See, these all right here are originally Emerald Comet's uh, vectors, and they were created by another artist. But after using those as reference... I made my own custom puppet of him and trying to replicate him as best I could. So we're just going to use him as an example. As you can see, Adobe Flash Professional is loading. This is the program I use to create my puppet and my vectors. A lot of people have been giving, asking me questions. Well, how do you make your vectors? Do you just make them one at a time individually? Well, yes, but not in the way you would think. I don't go and just make redo an image and redo an image and redo an image. I use a puppet that is rigged. What do I mean by rigged? Well, as you can see, I'm going to stretch this down a little bit. All of these layers, they all have a purpose. So you have like his one ear, the horn. I believe this is for his mouth, but oh no, his mouth is down here. I'm not, I think this is for his hair. Sometimes I forget to name these, but I figure it out anyway. This is eye one, so this controls his brow, eyelid, cheek, and eye in general. This is his head or skull, his front leg, neck, everything. Yeah, it's basically a puppet. And this is the key to how I make so many vectors in a short amount of time. I make just one really good rigged puppet and then using the layers I can position this puppet in any way I want so let's say I want him to do an epic pose I'm gonna give you all a demonstration right now well let's start with the eyes so I'm gonna go to the brow layer and I'm gonna give him an epic pose and I'll have him stare at the camera for us. And I want to give him a big smile, too. Oh, I saw that one little eyebrow perk, though. I want to, I want to try and use that. He's like, hello, ladies. <laughs> and as you can see, I just went into the eye layer. Because it is its own layer and it's got its own multiple layer so it's like for the brow cheek and eyelid effects if i needed them again this is the masking layer and it hides the shine and the people in the iris under the line itself but i can move them individually i still want to give them that smirk So now he's got a smirk, smirky face going, but I still want him to have like a heroic, a heroic looking pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move his head and his neck a little bit. Like have his head tilt up where he's like, yeah, I know I'm good. I know I'm bad. Yep. He's, he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> we all know he's cool. I'm just helping him look good. And then here's his other leg. I need to put that into a folder so I can just grab it all in one go. But I like to stretch out the, the back leg a little bit. 
because it gives it a bit of weight, a bit of depth. Gonna turn his tail up slightly so he's like, oh yeah. And there you have it. That's basically how I make vectors. I reposition this puppet over and over and over and I just go to like file, export, image, and it, it creates those epic poses we have. What I never ever do, which came with uh, trial and error, is I never save over the puppet after a pose has been created. I want him to go back to where he originally was. So what I do is I hit revert and it takes it back to where he originally was. And I save him out as this every time. That way I can reposition him as many times as I want and not have to worry about repositioning him again. Because if you do that, if you save over a position and you can't get it back into this original form, you're gonna hate yourself. So yeah, I had puppets for him. I had puppets for Eliora. I had puppets for Keyframe. Like, see, here's Keyframe's TF2 poses that were originally made by Vector Brody, but I went back and remade them again. So I have a TF2 puppet of her. But I also have a normal puppet of her as well. Even one of her sitting. I have one for Dr. Wolf. I mean, these are the ones created by Vector Brody, and these are the ones I made for him. However, I have recently updated his puppet, so now he is standing on two legs. I have finally figured out the bipedal furry stance and now I've kind of been using it into my other puppets but yeah I even have one of two critic Y2K and Eliora and Robin Robin's puppet however uh, in my defense I did have to redo on some things but it's actually original order was created by storm analysis if you don't know him check out his channel so yeah, that, that's all the puppets and vectors I had to create, and then of course I had to go and make um, custom backgrounds, which was a challenge in and of itself. Like here's the Lightning Bliss channel, and these are all the background vectors I like to use. So I have that Bliss carriage, carriage thing I haven't used very often, for my EDK Productions logo, weapons, intermission blank, the logo, my former stage I used to have. Uh, that little castle thing I created, and here's the main stage, which was which is what I created. Bunch of other stuff I like to use. Yep, uh, most of these were custom made. But yeah, after all is said and done, I had to put everything together, and that's basically it. Uh, it took several months of getting every pony's lines together uh, because everybody has different schedules and can and has other projects to be working on they can only do so much and you know I, I, I had to be very patient with everybody to get their uh, their lines to me in time At this point, I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> a video to play back. But, uh... But basically, um... Yeah. A few months later, I finally got everybody's lines. And, um... From there on, it took about another month of production just to get lines together in an audio wave format. And then after that came uh, the production of music and uh, sound effects. Now, the music, which I am playing right now, uh, this was Thunderblight's uh, theme song. This was created by a person who volunteered to help me with music for my channel. Um, in exchange for uh, artwork and puppet of his OC for him to use in the future. And his name is Mini Mistro, and you can find him on his channel on YouTube. He's a really cool guy. He does pretty cool music. Um, he does have a certain style, though, so uh, I, I wouldn't pressure him too much on doing certain styles that he may not be able to do. But his style matched perfectly for my episodes here. And... Basically, I gave him 
a theme from the monster mark of Rainbow Bright and asked him, I'm trying to aim for something like this, very 80s um, pop music, pop or techno music, because I really like that form of music. And I wanted something unique for Thunderblight as a theme song because I was really, really worried about using other people's musical content, especially with YouTube striking a lot of channels that were going on at the time. So about a few weeks of waiting to about a month of patience, um, he came up with four to five different versions of Thunderblight and we settled on this one, which he basically hyped up afterwards. For me to use and another thing he did though which I asked it out of a request was to make lightning bliss's theme song which was inspired by rainbow bright to be used um, in a triumphant way when she battled against thunder blight and if I really cannot begin to thank him enough for all his work and patience with me and uh, trying to help me get my vision into reality Without that music, I felt like I would have to use somebody else's content. Because it was bad enough I was already using content like at the beginning, like Lightning Bliss's Transformation. Or uh, Rumi's song, which was um, uh, I Won't Back Down. I was really worried about getting copyright strikes for it, even though I give credit. But th thanks to Mini Minstro, this was happily avoided. I have not received any copyright strikes or complaints. Uh, because I haven't used any other people's content. I, these, this is original work made by Mini Minstro. And, oh, the, it, it's just relief, pure relief that he was able to help me out there. Um, I know that a lot of people think that this might be a lot of work for one person, but I just prefer to work this way. I don't understand why myself. I guess it, it, it does make things harder for me, but... With the exception of title card artwork that was made by Sapphire Heart Song and Sketchy the Changeling, I basically did all of the effects, animation, and uh, acting for both myself and uh, Thunderblight on my own. Um, oh, with the exception of Thunderblight's voice, uh, her voice was made into a kind of a chrys chrysalis changeling inspired, uh, thanks to Joe Wistonator. Uh, if you guys don't know him, you should check out his channel here. It's really, really without him, he, he he's what really helped me to bring Thunderblight to life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all I could do was voice act. But he made her sound like bad, bad booty, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I can't begin to thank him and Mini Maestro enough and everybody else who helped to support this project. It, it... It took a year's worth of, almost a year's worth of production. Uh, when I first came up with the idea back uh, 2015 of July, and then I finally was able to release it back in, uh, uh, I believe it was April. Um, I'll have to check on that, but if I'm wrong, then oh well, I derped. <laughs> but it was all worth it. I was so happy that my friends wanted to contribute to it. I, I, I <laughs> It was a push of what I could do in regards to my animating and uh, artwork ability, as well as project uh, control. It was my first project being a leader, and I guess it's proof that I can lead a group, but it's quite clear that I do need help with, uh, I guess, production work because uh, making all these hundreds if not thousands of vectors I did on my own and then adding to the effects and animation itself. And plus, I had to put all the audio together once everything was said and done. The audio alone was just torture for me. Uh, audio work is not fun to me. It's tedious and it's annoying. I mean, I, sure, I love how it comes out in the end, but just doing it all by myself, it's not my strongest and I absolutely hate it. But uh, it still came out all right in the end. I actually did learn a few things from it such as like sound effects when Twink was running across the stage as you're about to see here and um, or ropes being tied around Lightning Bliss. The sound effects are very important. I, even the sound effect for Thunderblight's attack, that was from an old 
alien sound effect from the 1940s and 50s. It was really cool to hear that again. It was even used in Rainbow Bright. Even Lightning Blues' rainbow effect was used in Rainbow Bright, the sound effect. Um, I don't think, believe it's no longer um, copy claimed anymore because the series is so old now and nobody really remembers it except as old characters. <laughs> Um, then, of course, I mean, at this point, I'm kind of am just rambling. Uh, I mean, wow. And then <laughs> the final production of this was just pure epicness, having every pony coming together to help Bliss out. This is what we do in the Brony community. We help each other out where we can. Um, I remember in a real life situation where we helped keyframe out in a rough family situation we've helped uh golden fox when he was in rough times or toon critic y2k when he was in rough times and i'd like to think they'd all do the same for me um it, no matter how stubborn i am and i don't like to accept help but <laughs> you know sometimes one must accept help in order to survive in this world and with thunder blight this was no exception blissey needed help because her alter ego was going to get her. Oh man, what a roller coaster ride this has been. Uh, uh, again, I I can't begin to thank all my friends enough for helping me out with this creating this project. Um, everybody acted out amazingly. Uh, the 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 art the the the, the audio editing from Mitty Medstrom and Joe Wistonair really helped to bring it to life. Uh, everybody contribu con contributions to the script, making it better than what it is. Uh, uh, it's probably one of my proudest achievements on my channel, and I really hope one day I might be able to even best it. We'll see. Right now, I'm just kind of savoring this moment that not only was this a challenge of me versus my inner dark self, but... It was also pushing my limits as an, an, a media creator, an artist, and an animator, um, as well as becoming a team leader as of sorts just to make this project a reality. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's really all I have to say about this, Everypony. I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little behind the scenes. And... Um, uh, I hope y'all continue to watch my channel and the channels of my friends who are all creating content of their own. And, <laughs> yeah. That's it for behind the scenes of Thunderblight. I hope you guys enjoyed it all. And, of course, if y'all have any questions about how I created certain things, just let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to respond. Other than that, guys, y'all keep an eye out for those rainbows. They will make you smile. <laughs>